All right, good morning. It is um, Friday, March 27th at 9 a.m. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everyone that's here for coming this morning under these trying times. <clears throat> All right, do I have any amendments to the agenda? I'm in here, Mr. Chair. Have a motion, please. I move that we approve the agenda as written. A second, second, Mr. Chair. Further discussion? Roll, please. Commissioner Gold. Vice Chair Boyce. Yes. Chair Pash. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. All right, moving on to <clears throat> three. Uh, discuss declaring an emergency and adopting an order to close all transient lodging establishments in Curry County. Ms. Schmelzer. I'm Julie Schmelzer. I'm the Director of Operations for the County. And the board had uh, passed a resolution on Monday requesting the governor to do an executive order, uh, requesting the governor to do an executive order to close the hotels, motels, uh, bed and breakfast, things of that nature, as a way to uh, minimize traffic into the county and protect our resources, such as um, items in the store, and then also to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. The governor's office got a hold of us on Wednesday and explained that the governor would not be um, doing an executive order because it did not apply statewide. It would only be for a certain part of the state. So we were advised to proceed with our own declaration if we wanted to do that. So what you have before you is a declaration for the board to decide whether or not they want to proceed with this emergency declaration. What it does basically is it says that all hotels, motels, short-term rentals, and homestay lodging um, basically are off limits now to visitors, but there are some exceptions. Um, it says it does not apply, so our ordinance would not apply to a city that has adopted their own resolution, or I'm sorry, executive order, uh, declaration I should say. And it exempts people that um, are staying there on a long-term basis that had those agreements in place prior to the board passing their emergency declaration on Wednesday. It exempts people that are delivering essential goods and services to the county, victims of domestic violence, health care workers, government workers, first responders, veterans, and other persons deemed by the city or county or state to be essential for the emergency that we're in. It has a part two to it, which says all recreational waterways and their beaches and gravel bars whereby social distancing cannot be or is not maintained um, shall be closed. So in other words, it would... Um, We've had a situation, my understanding is, where some of the beaches were very crowded. It would say those beaches, therefore, are closed because you're, there's not enough area or room on that beach for all the people there to maintain that social distancing. And then it also said, has a part three, which says all the businesses in the county are required to comply with the governor's executive order. It goes on to say, furthermore, the um, to enforce this emergency declaration, it directs the County uh, Office of Emergency Management, Department of Public Health, law enforcement, and the transportation agencies to take necessary steps authorized by law to coordinate the enforcement and implementation of this order. Uh, emergency, manager, emergency Management Director Jeremy Dumeyer has had contact with the Department of Transportation. They are willing to put signs at uh, the north and south border advising travelers of this declaration if uh, the board decides to go ahead and approve this. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Schmelzer. Do you have anything? Sheriff? Good morning, Commissioner. Sheriff Ward. You know, back Sunday, and I got a couple calls from commissioners, um, and we're talking about how packed the RV parks were and everybody standing around, the beach is packed and everything like that. So, you know, I, I got dressed and I went out, went down to Sport Haven Beach. There's hardly anybody on the beach, number one. Uh, 
the RV park wasn't as packed as it was expected or that was reported. And then I started going around to different RV parks and talking to them and uh, they all agreed that they were going to close all registrations and not accept any more until this um, pandemic was passed or we were able to get past it. Monday, the, you know, the commissioners, they adopted a rule or a resolution, a resolution drafted by David Brock Smith um, and basically says they would like the governor to shut down all county parks and and which I understand that the governor denied it or said they, they would do that but not any transient launching tech, uh, places like the motels and things like that. I went but I also heard that Agnes was full. I went up to Agnes. There was nobody in an Agnes RV park. So there's a lot of people that are complying and, and doing it on their own. I understand the city's adopted their resolutions. I support what they're doing. Um, but, you know, this is a county issue. And we're talking about moving people out of places, um, shutting down everything. And, and the, I got this thing yesterday at 4 o'clock. And I got the, the more I thought about it, the more I, I just didn't understand why it had to add some of the language that it was in it, which I will not support and I will not enforce. Before I go any further, I want to pass out something to the, each commissioner that uh, I got from the OSSA today, and, it, and it's a data sheet of, it's an accurate data sheet up till today that was put out by OSSA that goes by county, by state, by United States, and worldwide of, of what we're dealing with, uh, what each county is dealing with, the results, negative results, and so I want to pass that out so everybody is aware. Just to give you something to look at. These are going to be not daily, but to me anyway, and I can make sure you guys get a copy. Thank you, sir. That's just a little bit of food for thought. You know, you look you look through here, and and there's Oregon has a little over four million people, population wise, and we're looking at 361 cases. And just wanted to throw that up there too. <clears throat> now getting back to uh, the order that was in front of you today that I had a look at, <clears throat> I have no idea why, and the governor doesn't support this because the governor says she wants people to recreate, just stay six feet apart. But when they say to close all waterways, beaches and gravel bars where people can get out People need to be able to get out and get out of their houses during this time. We're facing an issue where, you know, law enforcement is going to be dealing with a lot of domestic violences, people losing their jobs, people not or losing their income, not being able to pay for their their mortgages, and this county is going to be sinking into an abyss that we're not going to be able to get out of. So where's it going to stop? We have to, you know, and you're not going to stop this the spread of this thing. You may be able to slow it down a little bit, but it's not going to stop until it stops. And we all have to realize that. But I'm telling you today, I will not support this resolution that you're giving out the way it's written. There's no way, reason, you even have the wording in there, you're going to close waterways, beaches, and everything. You can't. You can't have a six-foot distance because there's no place in Prairie County that you can't get six feet apart unless you put it. 10,000 people on the Lobster Creek Gravel Bar, you're not going to be able to you know, keep their distance. So I don't agree with this, and uh, I'll just let you guys do what you guys need to do. Thank you, sir. Commission commissioners? Yes? Um, I, I have some comments uh, when and if you're ready, Mr. Chair. Identify yourself for the record, please. Oh, I apologize. This is State Representative David Brock Smith. Go ahead, House sir. District 1. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the sheriff's comments. I am uh, just seeing uh, this uh, order um, about five minutes ago when I pulled it up. Um, I appreciate uh, the difficulty that we all have. Um, I was not aware that you had spoken to the governor or who had spoken to the governor on Wednesday. 
Uh, I had a conversation with her uh, finally yesterday afternoon. Um, and yes, because of, of a non-statewide closure, she is reluctant to just close the coast. Uh, of course, our coastal communities and counties are taking proactive steps, which I do support uh, in regards to the transient lodging tax businesses. Um, excuse me, transient lodging businesses, um, because we do need to slow, throw, slow the spread of the coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, we we have 16 hospital beds in Curry County. I was on the phone with uh, Jenny Razzo yesterday, checking in with her, and so far uh, she has uh, everything that she needs. Um, you'll see um, the daily uh, COVID uh, cases uh, start to increase because all modeling shows that that's what's going to happen. And the more social distancing uh, and the, following the governor's uh, executive orders, the less of the curve uh, there will be. Um, to not belabor the conversation, um, I appreciate the order uh, following the recommendations that were previously given, given by the Coastal Caucus, except for I wholeheartedly agree uh, with the sheriff and the governor has, has taken great steps to make sure that yes, stay home, but we want you to recreate if you can maintain social distancing. And so within your order, um, and I'm asking the sheriff uh, as well, if you just move forward with section one that takes care of the transient lodging businesses offers the 28 day recommendations to keep underneath the, uh, the, the 30 day rent control issues um, in the county because as you, as the city of Port Orford will pass theirs today closing their um, uh, transient lodging uh, facilities Gold Beach already has and, and Brookings uh, did so last night all of Lincoln County Tillamook County and Clatsop County have done so um, as well as uh, many of their communities. Uh, with Harbor having a lot of the transient lodging businesses within the county and outside of Brookings, but yet those individuals, since restaurants are for takeout only, then must use the uh, shopping facilities within the city of Brookings. We're putting added stress not only on those resources, but also on the potential spread uh, from outsiders. So it, I, I fully support, as does the Coastal Caucus, uh, closing the lodging facilities outside of this, uh, in Curry County. Uh, but I would suggest that you strike, sec strike Section 2 and remove it. You strike Section 3, it's redundant because um, the Governor's or Order 20-12 uh, uh, supersedes all uh, local orders. And you strike the uh, the the last. Uh, furthermore, uh, with regards to the emergency powers, because they are already granted uh, within your emergency declaration, it's it's redundant. And as the uh, as it was commented before um, by um, uh, Administrator Schmelzer, the. Uh, um, uh, um, Office of Emergency Management can can already work with ODOT without that section uh, to have those signs placed on each end of the county uh, saying that the trans transient logic businesses are to close or are closed. And so I am supportive for whatever it's worth, commissioners, of the order with it only including section one. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you have any. Thank you, Representative Smith. Anyone else have any comment on this, Ms. Fritz? Uh, Jody Fritz, City Manager, City of Gold Beach. I would just um, uh, echo what um, Representative Smith said that um, I, I would really like you to see something adopted today 
something. So um, in order to expedite that, I, I would agree that you could probably um, strike section two. Um, as far as section three and the furthermore, you could just say reaffirm. We reaffirm our, our prior thing or you could delete it. But I urge you to adopt at least section one today. Uh, the concern that the city has is that while we have adopted our own resolution, um, there are motels and RV parks that are in close proximity to Gold Beach that um, if visitors do come there, it's, it's effectively going to negate the resolution that we adopted because they're still going to be shopping in our restaurant, I mean shopping in our, in our stores, reducing the stock that's there. Um, I spoke to the, uh, one of the grocery managers yesterday about the city's declaration and he was saying that while they're doing okay on food, it's the inside aisles, what he called the, the in, inside store aisles. So like the sundries, you know, obviously the toilet paper, which I totally don't get, but whatever. Um, the toilet paper, uh, cold and flu medications, things like that, they are, are desperately low on and they're not getting shipments. So if we have people um, coming here to, um, you know, for whatever reason, instead of staying home like they should be, um, they're going to be taking up preci precious resources that we need locally. So I would urge you that if, if it comes down to it to, to strike whatever you need to strike, but at least adopt section number one, please. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Barnes. David Barnes, I'd just like to, I'd like to support what uh, Representative Smith, the sheriff, and Ms. Fritz said. I go to the beaches here every day, and you have to walk a good bit of distance to be within six feet of somebody, 99 times out of 100. Last night I was up here for the sunset. There was no one on the beach between the jetty and as far as I could see south. Um, another thing that I want to bring up is that we have a lot of RV parks in this county that uh, May 1st begins their season. And there's a lot of people who rent year to year and have upcoming seasonal reservations and that's something that you're going to have to address pretty soon I'm thinking here so um, that's all I want to say thank you thank you council huddle oh thank you Mr. Chair all respect to Representative Smith sir uh, oh you got it okay okay, <clears throat> okay so all respect to Representative Smith I'm I would prefer that just sections three and four remain in uh, I have no feeling on number two Commissioner Boyce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you didn't mention Section 1. Oh, well, I, no one has spoken out against Section 1. Thank you. Representative Brock Smith, can you hear me okay? Court, court yes, Boyce. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, are, are you going to keep, um, is the Coastal Caucus right now intending to uh, continue to lobby the governor on uh, the, the whole approach you set out and that we voted on uh, Monday. What's your plans there? Well, the governor is, um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, the governor is fully aware of the Coastal Caucus's position. I articulated it on our 10-minute ten, ten phone call yesterday. Um, the governor is taking other steps um, with regards to using the highway signage, uh, the reader boards over the highways to discourage people from coming to the coast this weekend. She's going to step up patrols uh, from the Oregon State Police uh, on our roadways um, uh, for potential uh, uh, interactions with public. And, and she's also going to uh, have uh, those uh, OSP and um, our uh, state parks personnel that are out in the field uh, continue to, to uh, maintain and check on uh, our state parks accesses that have been closed. Um, at this time, that is all she is willing to do because there are some communities that um, don't want uh, their uh, communities, uh, transient lodging businesses closed. And so she is not willing uh, to close all of them. Uh, further, there is an issue with, um, you know, folks in a statewide um, ban 
that she's under a tremendous amount of pressure, commissioners, to do a full stay-at-home order. And she knows what, uh, if everyone follows the orders that she's already laid out, um, that we can achieve that goal of flattening the curve of the spread of coronavirus and COVID-19 without closing uh, all of our business community, not just the transient lodging businesses, but all of our business community to non-essential businesses. And so she is doing um, a, um, and and, and there's many of us that appreciate the balance of health, life and safety and our economy. And so um, she, uh, appreciates, as I do, the proactiveness of our local jurisdictions to move forward. I appreciate um, uh, City Manager, uh, City Administrator Fritz's comments. Thank you, Jody. Um, of course, you, Gold Beach has the same issues as Brookings uh, with the folks on the other side of the river and elsewhere uh, that have places to stay, and they too come into the city to utilize the services and resources for our residents. Um, and so I, I would encourage, um, I, you know, I mean, there's not much, I, I would go to the sheriff and, and get his opinion on, on the furthermore, or, or what I believe county council called section four, unless there's a different section. Cause in the, in the document that I have in the packet online, I only have sections one, two, and three, and then a furthermore. Uh, and so I'm not aware if there's a section four. There's not. Okay. Thank you. I got another question for him, if I may. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Representative Brock Smith, uh, you know, Monday we didn't have any cases on the coast, and I think you're probably aware that, uh, and not that we didn't anticipate this, but now we have um, two or three. It depends on where the Lane County portion weighs in. I'm not assuming that's on the coast. Um, and so we do, we do have a case in Lincoln County. Yes, and one in Tillamook now. And as Last Monday we did not have, and that we did not have a case anywhere on the coast. I think that's accurate. That is correct. Okay, thank you. So um, we received a, and this may be, may very well be an isolated case, but we received a picture yesterday afternoon that had four large uh, garbage sacks uh, just put right alongside the highway. And we don't know if that was a local person or if that was somebody outside the state or outside the area. Uh, but did, did anybody send you that email by chance and that, uh, those photos, Representative? Not to my understanding, no. Okay, we'll make sure you get that. So, um, you know, we don't want to be reactive on that, but it is an issue. And I think that's why you saw the cities come together with the county and accept the challenge of we prohibit our visitors from coming now to the best of our ability or we it, this thing may th- th- it's it's for real this this is this is quite uh, a, a, a situation our people are are understandably nervous you've heard the supermarket reports and all the booths with that um you know i don't know how section uh, I, th- I think Director Smeller were just trying to be thorough. I didn't know that the Section 2 was going to be in there. Uh, it was certainly worth a review. Um, and I, if I understand the general consensus here, uh, everybody would be okay passing this as long as we move Section 2. Is that, is that fair, Mr. Chair? Well, I, I agree that some of this is redundant. Um, I have further comments on, on the rest of it, but... Um you know, if you want to continue with your Okay, I just want to make one more comment. I, I, working with the cities has just been tremendous. Uh, they have put in an incredible effort, and uh, they have legitimate concerns. And if we pass this today with some amendments, I think that uh, it, could be, it could be workable and uh, uh, a good approach and, and the best, best way to go right now. Originally, the governor, you know, a month ago was saying stay home, uh, stay healthy, then stay home, um, stop the spread, and then finally now it's stay home, save lives. So the people are coming into our area. Uh, I'm not saying that we're taking that lightly. I just really want to emphasize that it, um, it, it is a growing thing, and I'm very sad to see that we have two additional cases, or two new cases um, on the coast, and we'll watch that 
closely. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Golden, Mr. any comments? Uh, I, I kind of concur with the sheriff. Do you have your mic on? Okay, I concur with the sheriff as far as section two because I think it's possible for people to do their social distancing very easily on the beaches. Um, I got a, an email from Beth Barker Hildago with concerns about the uh, homeless being able to be um, sequestered in case they uh, were positive and I'm looking at section one here and uh, part of it says these are the exceptions, county or state to be essential or necessary during the pan pandemic. So when we get into necessary exceptions, that could cover that issue. I'm done. Brock Smith, did, uh, did you have something else, sir? I did, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate uh, Commissioner Gold's comments. We need to make sure that we have the ability and we're trying to all over the state um, have the ability to take care of our most vulnerable, um, which not which also isn't just our elderly that are more susceptible and our youth uh, and those with pre-existing conditions, but also our homeless. I just wanted to point out that the governor declared the state of emergency only 19 days ago. And so again, I, I, I can't thank all of you and our other electeds in the state uh, are on the coast and are in our communities in Curry County. We're coming together and working together so swiftly uh, to protect the residents' health, life, and safety in Curry County and their communities. So, uh, this is a very difficult time. I mean, and, and uh, as I said before, in all my years, um, I've never imagined that I would be uh, supportive and requesting of closing businesses. Uh, the economic uh, impacts to our communities and the state as a whole is is great. Um, uh, just really quick, Mr. Chair, you know we're moving forward, and I sent out in a press release newsletter yesterday, yesterday evening to all of you. It's rather thorough um, and detailed, and so it's long, um, as I normally am on the microphone. And I apologize, uh, Commissioner Gold. Um, um, but it, it does lay out some of the things that we're working on with our Joint Committee on COVID Response. Uh, we're planning on more than likely going into the building next Friday. We just have to turn on, we have to ramp up the machine, if you will, to get things drafted. Um, now that we have uh, the Phase 3 or the CARES Act out of the Senate, uh, that should be voted on out of the House today. We kind of know where we can be more detailed in the state to support our uh, residents of uh, businesses and communities. Uh, while I have you all, um, you know, there's going to be about one, $1.25 billion coming to the state. And my understanding is um, half of that is going to be coming to the county, the, 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 the local government. Um, uh, and half of it's going to the, the state government. Uh, I've already been in conversations with the Coastal Caucus members and others to make sure on our conference call yesterday to make sure that um, that we get our portions for our local jurisdictions of those resources. Uh, and I will be fighting tooth and nail. Um, I also have um, I've been dissecting the legislation out and there's other resources for counties that NACO has done a very good job. And, and Commissioner Pasha, I know you're very involved with that uh, organization and, 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 and court and, and Sue, uh, that um, there's other resources coming. But I, I sorry, I digress. Again, uh, this order that you have in front of you will help protect the people. Uh, we need to do that now. I don't see an end date. Uh, which you can come back at any time um, and rescind it and uh, open those uh, resources uh, and businesses back up. And since you've been in great coordination with the with your uh, cities, I'm sure all of you could do that and continue that coordination together uh, in the future. 
So uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you for your uh, good work. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm in full agreement with Sheriff Ward uh, on the recreational waterways. I understand, um, as many of, as Sheriff has just articulated, that last weekend there were a lot of pictures on social media. Um, and I actually called the sheriff and said, you know, there's all these pictures on social media. Um, you know, what's going on? And uh, sheriff went down to South County. And uh, actually, I think I was coming back as you were going down. I, I noticed three out-of-state plates in, in the uh, in the Harbor RV park there. Everything was Oregon. And there was two, uh, two California plates. And I believe it was Nevada or Arizona. There was... There was one other plate. Every other trailer that was in that park, of which most were packing to leave when I was there, um, were all Oregon plates. But I do understand there were some pictures that were taken um, from northern Oregon on the coast, up around Lincoln and up in that area, where they were literally parked on the beaches. They were having parties. There was 20 or 30 motorhomes that were literally in the sand on the beaches with big campfires. I'm sure that our sheriff isn't going to stand for I'm sure if he sees that in this county, he's going to direct his staff to go take care of that. But we've also got to realize that you've got 2,300 people out of work, basically the, the thrust of our county is out of work and their children. I mean, you've got kids sitting around rooms, idle, idle hands leave idle, mind, or idle minds, or whatever it is my mom used to always tell me. <clears throat> you've got to have a way for people to get rid of this energy because they're not going to work, they're not most people are trapped in a 15 by 30 apartment and with two or three kids and a, you know, they're not going to be able to meet some of their bills and the stress is going to build. And so we've got to have a way for people to get out and, and get some of that stress out. So I, I believe completely removing uh, section two um, and, and allowing people to get out and, and do that, uh, you know, do what they need to do in a, you know, and with respect to the, to the governor's, uh, policies um, businesses are going to pure suffer and I'm I'm I am not for all of you know all closing all these businesses and closing the hotels but I understand the bigger picture on that I understand that we have to protect our public so do I wish there was another way yes I do um, can we police it probably not as good as we should be able to um, so, you know, reiterating Section 3 and Section 4 to me, again, it's just, uh, as, as Representative Smith said, it's probably just redundant. Uh, I don't see any offense to it being in there. I do think we should have an end date on this um, as, uh, as we do our other documents. I think it was June 30th. In this, um, this declaration, it says it is in effect until further notice. And just a side note, too, if the board does adopt this, this also says that the order takes effect at 5 o'clock today. Okay. So do we want to put an end date on this, commissioners? I mean, this is something else. Do we want to just leave it until further notice, or do we want to put an end date on it, and then we can always adjust that date after? Commissioner Gold? I think until further notice covers it, simply because we don't know when this thing's going to end. So if you put an end date, then you have to have another meeting to, to change that. So. Agreed, Mr. Chair. Uh, question for Brock Smith, Representative, are you still with us? Yes, sir. If we eliminate Section 2, do you feel or have any apprehension that this might uh, still send a uh, kind of a panic message? Um, and, and I guess I'll put it this way. Are you in full support if we eliminate Section 2? And again, I'm not sure where that came from. I, I think we're just trying to be thorough within our department and uh, the Bach office there, but um, I, I, I was a little uncomfortable with, with it certainly last night, but go ahead if you would, please. Um, uh, thank you, Commissioner. So uh, I'm, I'm fully in favor of eliminating Section 2. Uh, uh, I appreciate uh, the Chair's articulation of the situation that our residents are facing right now. They need to get out. We want our residents, our residents moved here because of the recreational opportunities that they have. As 
as Mr. Barnes stated uh, when he testified to you all. Um, and as long as everyone follows governor's uh, executive orders in 2012, um, everyone's going to be following the social distancing protocols anyway. And so there, there is no reason for section two. As far as the last furthermore, um, I would again um, uh, refer to the sheriff on that, considering that it talks about the uh, his powers as well as as uh, as the office of emergency emergency management, and I would uh, refer to his opinion uh, on um, on that. Thank you, sir. So I just want to make sure you don't feel like this is. Uh, sending the wrong mis message to the public or a mixed message, uh, it's, you're comfortable with it. I, I just want to make sure of that. Uh, uh, well, um, yes, uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner, um, we're eliminating Section 2, um, I don't feel, uh, sends a mixed message. There isn't any beaches closed on the Oregon coast, to my knowledge. Lincoln County uh, instituted Section 1, Clatsop County instituted Section 1, um, Tillamook County instituted Section 1, but also closed uh, their public um, boat ramps. Again, my argument to them then and still now, and when I was on the call with the Port Commission at Brookings Harbor on Monday, um, we want people to recreate, and closing off the boat ramps does not allow people to go out and get their own food by uh, or uh, closing off the waterways does not allow the people to go out and get their own food uh, if they choose uh, to avoid the grocery stores where you have a better, uh, more of a uh, chance of, of contracting the virus. Um, but further, um, I, I do not think it sends a, sends a wrong message. I think it's consistent with um, the uh, the other orders that other counties and communities have done, and the Port Commission, for example, closed uh, their RV park, but still uh, kept access open to the beach. Uh, so, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Sheriff? Um, <clears throat> just this whole thing about how many people were here, you know, just keep in mind that was over spring break and spring break was basically pretty much over. People that were coming for spring break had reservations from last year or that come here every year. Those people aren't coming back, I'll guarantee you. But uh, I agree with Dave Rocksmith. We need to remove section two. I don't think section three needs to be in there as well because it's covered on the executive order of the governor. And I wouldn't, but the furthermore about who's going to enforce it because it's covered in the governor's order. I think if you just put that section one in there like you guys would like to do, I would support that. Uh, people aren't going to come here and recreate from out of the area because there's going to be no place to stay for them. We're talking about our, our people that are here that we're going to be dealing with, the people that live here that we that are our friends, our families. And I want to support them being able to get out and get out of their homes and take care of their, their own selves and their families. That's all I got. Thank you. So do we have direction that we would like to remove um, leave section one? I would say yes. Commissioner Boyce? I was just going to ask Administrator Fritz if, uh, if we actually eliminated section two and section three, if that would uh, be in any way adverse to the, the cities. Because I've really appreciated, not that there's been 100% agreement, but the work, again, that went in with all three administrators and our administrator and the offices and the effort, uh, that yeah, trying our best to unify uh, for the last 48 hours has been just incredible. So I just want to make sure that we're not overlooking some, you know, you go into, you go into the supermarket parking lots, you're going to see out-of-state license plates. And that's, I think that's where a lot of our and, and I um, and and I I understand what Sheriff Ford is saying, but I I will say that I have to respectfully disagree because the city owns and operates the visitor center in Gold Beach, and while we closed the visitor center on the 13th when schools closed, 
um, we are getting calls at City Hall, and these are not people that had reservations already. They want to know if they can still come up because they're bored at home, and they say that. So I would respectfully disagree that no, they're, that's why the council wanted to move so quickly is that people are, are, are taking this, this as a vacation. And it's not just that they already had vacations planned, they're planning vacations right now. So I just wanted to say that. Um, I think that, like I said, I would just really like you guys to adopt section one, section three, and the furthermore, again, what we do when, when um, we have something that's redundant or repetitive or whatever, we just say, we reaffirm. So, I mean, you can take it out, that's fine, or you can leave it in and just say, we reaffirm the following. And I don't think it hurts either way. And I don't think that either of the cities, um, besides, besides ours, I, I don't think that they would disagree with that. So um, really it's up to you guys. If you wanna leave section three and the furthermore in, I, I, don't, I think that's fine. Um, if you wanna take it out, I think that's fine. But for our purposes, for our concerns at the city, it's the section one. That's right. our, that's our ready to make a motion. Well, if, you're uh, ready, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to Certainly. continue on the way we were doing is Section one was okay with everyone, correct? Mm -hmm. I, yes. Section two is to strike. I'd agree. Yes. Section three, do we want to leave this in or do we strike it or leave it? Or leave it amend, in an amended version? And that way there we can discuss if you want an amended version, we can, we can discuss the amendment. I now think we can just remove it too. And we, we always have the option of returning. Mr. Gold? Um, I think it's kind of redundant, to be honest with you, okay. because it's talking about complying with the governor's executive order. Okay. That's already out. So. And how about the furthermore? Remove, amend, or uh, leave in? Furthermore is fine, in my opinion. I think it emphasizes what we are wanting to do, so I think three is fine. <coughs> if you want to talk about, we want to re reaffirm. No, I'm sorry about the, the, the furthermore. We oh. already did three. Oh, I'm sorry. Furthermore is like four. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that staying in. Do I have a motion then? So move, Mr. Chair, that we adopt this resolution with the amendments, uh, those being removal of uh, Section 2 and Section 3. And I, I'm okay, and I think the board was, without having a, uh, uh, a date to re for removal. Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily in, in, uh, in agreement with the furthermore either, but uh, that's fine. You want to read it for the public again, perhaps? What, the furthermore? Yeah. Furthermore, under the emergency powers granted by ORS 401.305, which is a statute in the law already, we declare that local and state emergency exists within Curry County. This declaration directs the Curry County Office of Emergency Management, Curry County Public Health, law enforcement, and transportation agencies to make all necessary steps authorized by law to coordinate enforcement and response to implement this order. This order shall be in effect until further notice. And it, like, like I say, it's, it's just redundant. If you want to leave it there, it's fine. If you want to remove it, it's fine. Well, if we said we, furthermore, we reaffirm, I think that might be saying that, yeah, we know we've said this before, but we want to emphasize it. Do you agree with that, Commissioner Boyce? So it would read, furthermore, we affirm. We reaffirm. We reaffirm. Did, did I misspeak there? You said affirm. Reaffirm, yes. So it would read, furthermore, comma, reaffirm under. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Schmelzer? Just a technicality here, okay? <laughs> I want you to look at something. So if you say you're reaffirming this, you're saying you are reaffirming that you already declared this was an emergency. You have not already declared this emergency. This is new to us today, okay? So if you look at 
look at the second line in there, it says you are declaring that a local state of emergency exists. And oh, we did that on March 18th. Um, you're saying that um, it exists as far as these hotels, motels, short-term rentals. I think you already have declared everything is related to the COVID-19 situation. This is just an order under that emergency. So I, I think reaffirming uh, that you have already declared the emergency is just fine. It's, it's all related to COVID-19, is that correct? It is all related to COVID-19. My understanding was you wanted an emergency declaration saying people could not stay in the hotels. It, it, it's right it's it's an order carrying under that's why the reaffirming we're doing this because of the COVID-19 I, I think it's we're getting a little bit into semantics here but I think either, either way is fine if I may miss Commissioner Boyce I think either way it's just sending a consistent message to our citizens and even people outside the county so I'm fine either way it's if you go back to 2012 the governor's declaration she starts the entire declaration by listing all of her prior declarations under this emergency so again it's it's following that protocol uh, leaving it in there and reaffirming it I think it'll have the same effect in force how okay, about if you. we if I can just make a recommendation sure. on that then so under the emergency powers granted by ORS reaffirm that a local state of emergency exists within Curry County this declaration directs the Curry um, because what what this is typed as or my understanding is you wanted a declaration so um, you know, it goes on to say this declaration, meaning this one regarding the hotels, directs the Curry County Office of Emergency, Emergency Management, et cetera, to do their job. So that's it's kind of goofy when you're saying reaffirm, can you're also saying this is a declaration. Right. I actually, that's something that I did not catch. I would prefer this be an order. Um, yeah, it yeah. says order on the right. front and page. We do so our declarations as orders. So it should say an order. So then well, just so then let's just change that last sentence to say instead of it's yes. uh, declaring we'll just say this we hereby order okay if everyone's okay with that I'm fine okay. with that. that's good I have a motion I have a motion and I think we're in agreement on what the, the slight amendments would be uh, specific to the last paragraph furthermore okay so are we okay on that so it'd be as amended correct yes I'll second that Further discussion? Roll, please. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Vice Chair Boyce. Yes. Chair Pash. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. With nothing further, this meeting is adjourned.